this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Harrisburg Area Community College in York, Pennsylvania. And in this podcast, I'll be continuing my review of the bones of the axial skeleton and finishing up the last of the cranial bones with the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone is a small bone that is located just medial to the orbits in the anterior part of the cranial floor. In relation to the other cranial bones and facial bones, it's located anterior to the sphenoid bone and posterior to the nasal bone. Structurally, the ethmoid bone forms part of the anterior cranial floor, the medial wall of the orbits, and the superior nasal septum. The nasal septum is the partition which divides the nasal cavity into the right and left sides. The ethmoid bone plays major structural and functional roles within the nasal cavity. Its interior structure is spongy and porous, which creates a tremendous amount of membrane surface area. Now let's take a look at the unique bony landmarks of the ethmoid bone. On the superior surface of the ethmoid bone is the cribriform plate. This porous, sieve-like, flat bone forms the roof of the nasal cavity and its location is on the anterior floor of the cranium. The many perforations throughout the cribriform plate are the olfactory foramina, and these allow passage of the olfactory nerves, which contain receptors that are sensitive to chemical odor molecules. Projecting up from the cribriform plate is a superior triangular shaped process called the Christagalli. This serves as the major attachment point for the Fox cerebri, which is the membrane that separates the right and left hemispheres of the brain. Projecting in the opposite direction from the Christagalli is an inferior bony plate called the perpendicular plate. This is a thin, flat bone that forms the superior nasal septum. The main body of the ethmoid bone consists of two lateral masses, which form most of the wall between the nasal cavity and the orbits. The lateral masses have a porous structure filled with air spaces called the ethmoidal cells, and combined together form the ethmoidal sinuses. Located on both right and left lateral masses are the nasal conchi. There are two pairs of these thin, curved, bony projections located on either side of the nasal septum. They are the superior and middle nasal conchi. There is a third pair of nasal conchi called the inferior nasal conchi, but they are actually separate bones and not part of the ethmoid bone. One way to remember the name conchi is from the word conch, which is the large tropical snail. Think of the curved snail shell when you think of the conchi and its curved kind of spiraling shape. All of the conchi function in allowing the inhaled air to swirl around the nasal cavity. This swirling spinning motion helps distribute the air throughout the entire nasal cavity, which warms and filters the air due to the high quantity of mucous membrane surface area packed within. And because of this spinning motion of the air, the nasal conchi are also referred to as the turbinates as in a rotating turbine that generates an electric current. Okay, that's it for the ethmoid bone. I hope this has helped in your understanding of the bones of the axial skeleton, and stay tuned for my next podcast on the facial bones. Thanks for watching. Bye.